and she was she was faking her weakness. Just to be the cane is actually for show. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, and we have Joseph now. Okay, so for the international viewers out there, we did the rope exercise, which I don't think I've ever filmed. I've made reference to many times. Oh, All right, so. Oh, yeah, it is. Never mind. I, am, yeah, it is I did recording. import it, though. It's risk recording. Okay. <laughs> I filmed plenty of things where I actually hit pause instead of... I recorded the break, but uh, didn't record the lesson. <laughs> All right, why? What happened there? It's something like in the middle of the rope. Is the tension the weakest? No, the, the tension is pretty much constant throughout. I mean, there are some force, small fluctuations, but her force was stronger than their force to pull. So she's just rude. <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> I think that's right. <laughs> I don't think the truth is. Maybe she can bench press, uh, you know, thousand pounds easily. Uh, right. So then maybe because the force is distributed between the rope. And so putting it down at one point is stronger. The force that that Robin and Alan were applying were pretty much equal to each other. Mm -hmm. And it would have been that same tension throughout the entire rope. It, it doesn't sort of dissipate the farther you get from it. All right, uh, for, whatever. we'll start on the left. Is it something to do with leverage? Um, no, that's that's the wrong way of thinking about it at this point. Yeah. Or it's a long way to get there. But that could do with the length because it being so long, it's much easier to exert downward force in the middle of it than if it were like this short. Why? That I don't know. Well, like if you let's say you cut the rope in half, wouldn't it? Constant force of gravity pulling the rope down. Uh, I'm going to assume that the weight of the rope is negligible compared to the amount of force that they were applying. Right. Yeah, something about the length of the rope yeah. does make it because, like, to if push you, it down. If you take like a small line of like a small line of nylon and you push it down, it'd be hard to like just like you know pull it because there's a bunch of tension just in, in the close ends between the middle. So like, it's not. No, the shorter rope would be more difficult, but. Then you veered off into the wrong direction. Yeah. Uh, Lord, you were going to say something? I was going to add something about the. Never mind. I was going to add something about the force of the gravity, but then also the directional force. But, well, yeah, no. Okay, out Oh, I forgot what I was about to say. My final answer is, <laughs> is it because the rope is like flimsy? If it was a solid, that would that make a difference? Uh, I'm assuming that the rope. Well, I mean, the rope bends because it's it has some flexibility to it. But I'm also assuming that the rope's not really changing in length much right. at all. So my final answer is something about the length. Because her downward force with gravity is stronger than their force to the sides, like her back one. You were so close. <clears throat> uh, the gravitational force, let's ignore. It's going to be tiny. Yeah. Can't say it again. Her force of like pushing down was greater than theirs. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I suspect not. If that's the case, then she is stronger than they are. There's another force, I forget the name of it too, right? Not gravity, but another kind of vertical force. Well, if she's touching it, that's something called a normal force. Oh, right. But we, we hit upon a, a key word here. Uh, her force pulls down, <clears throat> pulls each room towards her. Like her pushing down the rope pulls both ends towards her. Uh, it does, but they're fighting against that. Why is her downward force causing them to go off balance? Margaret, you look like you're about to say something brilliant. <laughs> I was gonna ask if it had anything to do with like it mass or weight. No, no. That any of you could connect it, but it's such a it is 
by no means anywhere close to a, a major player in this. Just a streamline of consciousness. When I was pulling it, and she first pu uh, started pushing down, it wasn't that bad, but the more traction she got since I was giving it my all, I, like, all of my force was focused on pulling the rope, that's probably a negligible part. But when she did start getting traction, I got off balance. Okay. Is there something there? But part of why did you get off balance? Jillian? Um, I don't know if somebody said this, I'm gonna try to explain it. So, when he said that when she put her hands on it, um, he got off balance a little bit, so I'm guessing maybe like the middle of the rope is the the source of like them being stable. Does that make sense? I don't know if that. And then like when he when she pushed it, it was like disturbed. I don't know if I'm explaining that right. Uh, I don't think you're hitting in the right direction there. Okay. Um, if I understood. Uh, one of the reasons to get that they were pulled off balance, uh, that leverage would probably fit in there, but not the key point. Or, and then, Giovanni. Is it because they're initially, their force is initially moving horizontally, but I've applied that interrupting force of that downward force to it? Which, uh, yeah. Well, that's what I was trying to say. I, oh, okay. I just didn't, I, I, I'm not good at like English, so that's, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Like when she pushed it down, it like they, the, the middle was kind of like the, like stable. I'm, I'm not good at English. I, I don't know how to uh, like, like, That's okay, it's part of the learning process. But like, yeah. They were focused on pulling that rope, but with the third um, force interrupting that, it kind of got them off balance. Yeah. It, all right, so let's so hit like a couple. It went from pulling it this way to like trying yeah. to pull it like that way. Kind yeah, the first thing you all right. Thing. Was it easier at the beginning or at the end? It was easier at the very end, actually. Yeah, easier at the very end. I think. Oh, after it got off balance? Yeah. Okay, before it gets off balance. But <laughs> before it gets off balance, it was easier to push it down in the beginning. In the beginning. All right. So the key thing is who, against whom were they fighting? Each other. Yes. Yeah. Almost all of their effort was horizontal. And so most of their effort was fighting each other. She comes along, pushes perpendicular to that, and they're, initially they're not fighting against that at all, so she can easily push it. Now, as, it, as they start pulling in that direction, they go from pulling this way to pulling that way, now some of their effort is against her, and then the steeper it gets. So if it's a shorter rope, it's gonna be like that. So more of the effort is upwards, but I have a long rope so that it doesn't, it's only so far that you can get. Right. If we were able to fly, we could just keep going up. <laughs> yes. And then um, this course would be very different. Yeah. <laughs> if only I wasn't like basically doubly the height about that. <laughs> All right, so here's the key takeaway. There are certain quantities, certain things that we will measure where direction matters. And there'll be certain things that don't. If I ask how many people are in this room, it's a solid number. There are no, there's no direction involved in it. It's just you count up the number of people, which is 17, 16. So that is, that is a different type of quantity. That, that's the kind of math that you've been working with since kindergarten or whenever you first did math. But there are certain quantities that involve direction and that requires different math. So I introduce or remind you or whatever the appropriate term is for you, vectors. We are talking about vectors. Vector math is different than the other type of math that, you, that most of you have been, been doing. A vector is a mathematical construct, nice specific terminology, where there is a direction and a magnitude. If both of these matter, we need to be dealing with vector quantities. If direction doesn't matter, what is the term for that? Scalar.
So scalar math is the type of math you've been doing since kindergarten. Two plus three equals five. That's scalar math. With a vector, if I had a vector of length two and a vector of length three, and I added them together, I'll end up with a vector anywhere from length one to length five because it's a direction vector. So let's just talk about the, do a little bit of vector math here. I can represent a vector several different ways. One way of representing a vector is just to draw an arrow in the direction that's appropriate and for a length that specifies. If I'm drawing a scale, these would be two vectors. The top one here has a larger magnitude than the bottom one, just because it's, I drew it longer. Now, if you can't draw that precisely, and don't want to pull out a ruler and get really retentive about it, you can always just label it. Just say that represents five meters, and this represents three meters. Technically, if I were drawing this properly, if that's five meters and represents three meters, this would be three-fifths that length. Or if this is 67% longer than that one. All right. Another way of representing them is, well, they have a magnitude direction. I can just tell you the magnitude and I can tell you the direction. So let's say that that is a 37 degree angle. Then this vector could be represented mathematically as five meters, 37 degrees. This is known as polar form. not always the easiest form to work with. In the textbook, if they ask you, if they give you a problem, they say, give me the magnitude and the direction, they're basically asking for the polar form of parts. Welcome to the Thank you. are supposed to be city blocks. I am starting here and I want to get to here. How would you get assume typical north and south and then everything else scales from there? What directions would you give me to get from there to there? And then what? And then head up north. And just keep going? Okay, yeah, let's don't forget we have to have a magnitude. Yeah. Alright, so three blocks east, and then two blocks north. That is a pain to write. So what do we do? They come up with a shorthand. Because, frankly, Physicists and mathematicians, there's a certain laziness in writing, uh, probably better worded, as they want to write as efficiently as possible. So instead of and, we'll just do a plus sign. Oop, I lost the direction there. It should be east. Three blocks east. Well, block is a unit that's that we're talking about here. East is in that direction. So I could just go three blocks, given my map, that way, plus two blocks, that way. But that doesn't necessarily help a whole lot. I mean, it's it works in this context, but we need to somehow get across this idea of we're going that direction. So when you want to indicate a direction, without having to write out words or draw arrows like that, we have what are known as unit vectors. That's an I. Now you can tell recognize a unit vector from other vectors because it has the hat on top. So I hat, the 
the way you would say it would be I hat. That is a unit vector because it's got the hat on top. Uh, that is a typical way of saying it. I hat. In French grammar, this has a special name that I never know. Anyone had some French and know what that's called? French? I've had some French. You've had some French? Yes. Do you know what that's called? No. Okay. <laughs> I've had a lot of French and I don't know. I know the other ones is the axel club and the axel like goop, but uh, it's a hat. <laughs> if you're program, if you're writing a formula in OpenOffice or LibreOffice, I hat is the the hat uh, brackets I is the way you would write it. So I hat doesn't have any particular direction. It's not like it, whenever anyone says I hat, you know, oh, okay, I know what that is. No, you have to define it. So what I would do over here is I would just go, throw a little error and write I hat. So now I can just write three I hat. Now I haven't written the units, so I'm gonna put them back in, just because if I don't have the units, it becomes more of a math problem instead of physics. And I also have up. I need to somehow indicate that one. Well, let's go for another unit vector. So I draw a unit vector up like that, and well, that's I, so this one is J. So plus two J hat, and now my units. Well, the units go with both of them, blocks. So I had in this, this problem. Yes. I had stands for whatever direction you define it to be. All right. Is J how always going to be up, or is it whatever you want it to be? It's whichever way uh, they need to be perpendicular to each other. Okay. And do you want us to write that thing, like if we're answering a problem with I hat, do you want us to write the direction that we? Yes. Okay. Unless I state otherwise, assume that you should write the direction of I hat. Okay, cool. Does it have a J in it, or can it be like any other letter? Okay. <laughs> Ultimately, it's how you, it's whatever you define. Some textbooks will go for X, Y, and Z. Uh, I really don't, not fond of that because of the brainwashing that the math people do, that <laughs> X axis, Y axis. Well, later on, we'll be dealing with slope problems, and you know, instead of going X, Y like that, because people have been so brainwashed into that being X, Y, uh, I prefer I hat, J hat, so that when you go off vertical and horizontal, I think it's less traumatic. But some people still go with X hat, Y hat, J hat, where, and in that convention, X hat typically is to the right and Y hat's typically up. But ultimately, I could have made I hat go that way. So what would the answer look like if I made I? I'm gonna do one other thing, because again, I don't feel like writing. I'm going to absolutely stunning visual effect here of colors. I'm going to create my own unit. <laughs> now, it's not a traditional unit. This, I'm not establishing this for the rest of the course or for your life because no one will have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> if you deal with a physicist, they might think you meant H bar and wrote B by mistake. So this is only this is valid only as long as I have it written right here. So in which case, my problem now becomes three I hat plus two J hat B bar, or three B bar I hat plus two B bar J hat. Now, if I instead said I hat was this direction and J hat was up, what changes? No, I, I'm not changing physically the problem. All I'm doing is changing how we're describing it. So does the three become negative? Uh, so I had is this way. Yeah. That's negative I had. Now we don't write, you could officially write three B negative I had. That is an awkward way of writing it. 
plus two B bar and J hat. Uh, this is not wrong, it's just awkward. Typically the minus sign comes in front, so negative three bar I hat plus two B bar J hat. That's given this convention right here. So like if you want to be mean to people, you can just say like negative three bar I hat and then minus two B bar J hat or something? Well, like I said up was positive, so, or that way, north was positive, so that's why it's still plus. Oh, yeah. I'm about to write something down, which is wrong. Well, I've just seen it a lot of times. I just want to bring your attention to it about why those parentheses are necessary. If you wrote, let me first start out with the Mr. Yuck sticker. If you wrote three B bar negative I plus two B bar J, and I've seen this kind of thing way too many times. I lost my hat. That is saying you take the scalar quantity, you subtract a vector from it, and then you add a vector to it. This is a subtraction problem. This is so you're basically in essence you're multiplying there. So that's why you need the parentheses. Questions to hear. Questions before I erase? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> They're right here. <laughs> Any questions? All right, so I have a vector here which vector A. I got a starting point. And uh, which way am I going? Three. Three, 